，外面不好意思，有点迟到。没问题，没问题。我们正在谈这个博萨的这个狱中经验。Alain, you can write something on it. You can do some philosophical meditation. I will. I will. Yeah, you will. I, you I, I know you will. You, you, you can trust me. I will. Okay, I'm sure. <laughs> I don't. I don't doubt it. <laughs> yes. You can write. Uh, mm -hmm. But by the way, well, everything will be uh, uh, conducted in Mandarin, uh, mm -hmm. but there will be interpretation. So I trust uh, you can get everything. But mm -hmm. uh, because we are facing audience uh, here, in, in I mean, uh, Chinese audience mm -hmm. uh, in Hong Kong, Taiwan, China, and elsewhere. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I hope you you feel okay. All right, yeah. I'll say all the good things in Mandarin about you. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Fine. Okay. <laughs> so shall we start? Yes. Okay. I'm ready. I'm ready. Okay. Okay. 那呃，好，在疫情当中，很高兴今天有这么多观众，呃，来参加这次的新书发表会。好，那那个现在，呃，有六十四十六位观众，呃，应该还会有其他的朋友再进来。那今天进行的方式，呃，我大概会用十分钟的时间做一个介绍，介绍我们的作者，介绍我们两位呃讲者，呃，然后呃，博萨教授会给一个 talk， 呃。应该是听说是六十分钟，啊、uh, ，You'll be speaking for sixty minutes, yeah. But 呃、uh, ，我想他他都有呃、uh, 翻译。之后我们会请朱元洪教授提供三十分钟的呃、uh, comment 回应，呃、uh, ，就是引言任何的呃、uh, 这个想法啊、uh, 挑战呐、啊、问题啊都可以。黄冠敏教授也是啊，三十分钟。最后，博萨教授回应二十分钟，因为可能会有一个很多的枪林弹雨之类的，那呃,呃也可能不是啊。然后我们开放 Q&A， 二十分钟。好，那我来介绍一下呃博萨教授。虽然大家可能从书本中，或者从上课，或者从。过去他的著作中已经知道他的大致的呃履历，他呃他在我们交大其实已经待了差不多有十二年，可是跟我们合作是从二零零四年开始。那我稍微介绍一下他的背景，他的他当然大家都知道他是过去呃呃法律。法国巴黎第八大学哲学系教授，那当时是《哲学与当代文化批评》（Philosophy and Contemporary Critique of the Culture）。OK， 那呃，他就跟当时呃 ，Michel Foucault， 呃 ，Gilles Deleuze， 呃 ，John François Lyotard， 呃 ，Jean Hansier， 和 Alain Badiou 这些人都算是同事。那呃，他特别。呃，我觉得他有非常多的特性，最主要的特性是他非常关注 plebeian， 就是平民底层，然后他有尖锐的批判性，也有非常敏锐的政治政治性，那更有一般人所没有办法跟他呃企及的呃幽默感。那个幽默感常常是，呃，绵里藏针，就是说，呃、uh, ，in the cushion there's a needle, so you don't feel it, but you 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 know it, uh, sooner or later. 就是这个 sense of humor, uh, is uh in the lines of his writing and also in his、uh, talks. 那呃，刚才说的，他除了从底层开始。谈呃，关注呃，平民，关注移民，而且他会批判政治暴力。他早期写过这个纳粹集中营的问题，也讨论过
种族灭绝的问题，所以他不会容呃容许别人轻易的使用种族灭绝这样子的一个概念。好，那他的专注的这个议题呢，其实常常就环绕在生命政治的问题，或者是战争，或者是历史，或者是呃历史的否认，呃历史的遗忘，集体的记忆。呃，他。曾经在各国都接受过邀请，呃，不只是这个，呃，欧洲，那包括这个亚洲地区，像日本啊，这个中国啊，这个还有这个呃，西欧各国，保加利亚、罗马尼亚、波兰、捷克、突尼西亚、巴西、阿根廷等等，所以我们会注意到说，他不会只停留在西欧的世界，他。特别的会关注，其实他非常关注第三世界，他也希望能够在这个位置去呃思考问题，所以他退休之后就呃来到台湾。呃，从他过去几本著作的书名，大家也会知道他的关注，比如说《二十世纪与纳粹集中营》，或者是《敌人的身体》。超级暴力与民族体制，或者是民主与免疫啊 ，immunity， 或者是假想的在地人，虚构的外国人，这个 xenophobic 的气氛的回返，这是早在二零一二年就出版的，或者是呃，狂怒的贱民，一个现代性的反历史 ，counter history，the enraged plebeian。平民的愤怒啊，还有妇科字字母表，或者是还有那些电影所能做的啊，呃，平民塑造电影，细节藏在魔鬼藏在细节中。那包括最近他在台湾出版的几本书，《妇科危险的哲学家》。和《妇科与中国》和这个即将出版的《平民与电影》。以及这一次我们要讨论的遭撞翻的哲学家，我说我们合作从二零零四年开始，最早我们在呃紫藤庐坐在那个地板上，在谈我们怎么合作。那个时候朱老师是社文所的所长，那呃博萨教授跟我们谈了非常有意思的一些想法，比如说没有围墙的学校。或者是说游牧的哲学家，或者是他呃到各个比较边缘国家的地方去举办夏日学校，所以我们从二零零五年在宜兰，呃邀请了这个日本、韩国或者是欧洲的这个呃朋友、老师带着研究生。所以这是一个非常有意思的一个起点。之后我们每两年就一次，从呃法国的西亚克，好到葡萄牙 Porto， 到 Albania 阿尔巴尼亚，啊，到土耳其，然后又到法国，然后在新竹，总共前后有七次。这个经验对我和寿文所的老师和同学来说，不同届的同学来说。都是非常特殊的，因为我们就有机会去认识其他国家的学者、其他国家的研究生，他们的问题、他们的研究方法。然后有些学生、有些老师就跟我们的学生、我们的老师成了蛮久的朋友。好，那更不要说跟着 b r o s a 教授，我们从他这个地方。学习到非常的多，我们的学生从他二零零九年开始在我们这边，呃，现在就是十二年了，就以不管是住校讲座教授，或者是客座教授，或者是最近这三年的玉山学者，那学生跟着他合作，跟着他参与一些计划，跟着他做一些工作坊，还有他的课程，他的课程非常有意思。包括当代社会中的生命治理，二十世呃二战太平洋电影史的现象学 shame 啊 phenomenology of shame， 
呃，欧洲中心主义重呃重重新批判，呃，从电影思考平民，不 d e l e u t e 和 oral history 平民的魔力，电影如何触动我们思考？电影中的总觉种族优越，或者电影中的骗局和篡夺，啊，这个 poetics。所以对我来说，从 Brosa 教授这么多年，好，作为朋友，作为同事。colleague 好，或者作为一个时常有一些 contestation 的一个呃哲学伙伴，我会认为从他身上我看到的哲学，其实他不是非常多的这些 document or archive， 而是一个思考的过程，一个面对问题、面对现象的探索，一种新的概念的铸造。而且对于继承观念的挑战，那我记得有一次我们在这个讨论的时候，他就说：“你们都太 gentle， 我们法国人都带着 pistol 到到这个到这个 conference 里面，就是带着枪上阵。<笑>”那那个我我。我觉得这是一个非常有意思的一个呃姿态。那从他身上，我们充分的看到这么多年，包括他最幽默的一些文字都有。所以，我们待会就听听看。好，那当然，大家应该手中要有他的书，要买他的书来看一看。不，不止这本书，还有以前的几本《不可与中国》《不可呃危险的哲学家》和。下面一本就是这个《平民与电影》。那在这本书呢，我们可以看到他的哲学旅行，好哲学思考。当然，这个一切都要谢谢罗慧珍罗老师，他是我们常年的朋友，他是个作家，是个教育家，是个艺术家。那我们说，每一个伟大的人背后都有一个更伟大的女性。罗萨教授的就是背后有一个伟大的罗老师。今天的两位讲者，我就也简单的介绍一下哈。那简单是因为大家都更认识他们。朱老师是呃，社文所跟我一样的创所所长啊，这个是支柱台柱，或者是还有什么柱呢？那他是德州奥斯汀大学的社会学博士。我们发我们在这么多年来，也发现他是知识渊博，啊，触触角甚广。然后他这个自己会说，可是我们也注意到，他一直有一个历史的偏偏好，历史、思想史、政治史、社会史，那古典哲学啊，到当代的议题辩论，他都会敏锐的抓到。那前两天。是昨天吧，前两天，昨天我们才看到他自己一个笔记。那个笔记如果要让那个博萨教授看到的话，他一定会非常的嗯呵呵。他记载了这个这个中国这几年两年来所打压的所有的这个呃私营企业啊，呃，更细节我想我就不要多讲，免得待会朱老师要开始发挥了。我们先不讲，改天。他在把这个 list 给这个 b r o s a 教授，因为他跟 b r o s a 有一个呃五年的约，应该三年之后就要到期了。那这个他们之间解决，我们现在不说了。那这个是说，除了历史的兴趣之外，还有对当代的理论的兴趣，他也是非常广泛的触及到非常多的这个当代的理论家，融会贯通。他一本一个作家，他他书架大概就有二十多本书啊。可能还不止，我不知道。啊、呃，他请过学生去喝，去他们家喝酒，我还没去过。他退休前该请一次。<笑>好，刘塔、福克、巴丁、博博学啊，呃，博迪尔、呃，高夫曼，还有博呃呃，巴什啊，还有还有很多，其实我我自己也都不熟悉的。那那个朱老师是毫不畏惧的去呃接触和拥抱和呃很处理这些思想家。
，那它其实它的起头是对于当下生活直接经验的关注，所以它从都市民族志、哈、啊、台湾研究、底层文化研究、这个呃次文化研究、生活风格研究、都市空间等等，都是它。呃，兴趣所在也是他专长所在。那他对于科技文化也是更为这个常年的探索，所以现在要谈的基因科技啊，或者是资讯啊，或者是传播科技啊，都是在他的触角之内。他开的课程呢，就还包括了宗教暴力、国家暴力、趣味政治等等等等啊。大家从他这一本书的。序言：我晕，我看到我就从头笑到尾，其实也没有吧。这个，这个，这个，这是他的风格，大家待会也可以看得到。第三位，我们的这个尹岩呢，也是常年的朋友，跟博沙教授也是常年的朋友。黄冠敏，黄冠敏教授，他目前是呃中研院文哲所的所长。那呃，他过去呃，台大哲学毕业之后，在法国巴黎第四大学，呃，哲学博士。他当时他就专注在谢林。那他的专长是从谢林上溯和下言，好、呃，就是他，呃，当然是扩及当代的法国哲学，还有德国的观念论，也会呃，特别从主体 （subjectivity） 和。Imagination 去探讨，所以根据他自己的说法，就是从谢林呢，我们就可以上溯到笛卡尔、康德，也可以下接海德格的形象学和后海德格的当代法国思想，这个真的是很明显的。比如说 Melopanti、福克、扎希达，好，那所以他从其实是伦理学和美学，好，都是涵盖在哲学的领域中间，他不断的去。呃，拓展，而他也有一本专著，就是巴什拉的专著。那呃，他也会从这些再回返到那个场所，因为一定是有个身体，一定是有个场所，一定是有一个这个文化和价值所在之处。那这个大概是他最近几年还在做的一些研究。那我的介绍就到此，现在我们就请。博萨教授先给一个 talk 啊，六十分钟，或者是 less or more， 那应该都可以。那需要翻译的朋友可以转到呃英翻中，好像应该是有的啊。那呃我呃呃 ，Alan go ahead， it's your， yeah， okay， floor floor is yours， thank you。Um, yes, as um, I told you, I told my colleagues before, uh, I have been shut up in quarantine for a week, and these are not the best conditions for uh, for me for this presentation. It's depressing. It's uh, exhausting. Uh, uh, I'm not used to be shut up that way. Uh, I'm feeling like in jail. Uh, and as you know, I'm uh, rather a stray dog than a pet, so this is why I'm so unhappy. Yeah. Okay, but never mind. We have to do it, right? Yes. So, so let's do it. <laughs> yes. Okay. So first, of course, uh, thank you, thank you again for giving me the opportunity to to present my book today, and thank you again. For having uh, made the book possible, I mean ICCS, uh, JAD program, and uh, YCU, uh, Professor Liu, of course, uh, who organized this meeting tonight, Professor Chu, who wrote a very, let's say, generous uh, presentation for the book, uh, Huang Quanmin, my friend, the second discussant for today. The translators, of course, and in brief, all those who contributed to the preparation of the book. Okay, but yeah, what book? What book? And this is what I would like to to begin with. 
because it's it's not uh, properly speaking a book which is a translation as usual translation from a book written in another language uh, because this book is made of a collection of articles and of course this immediately raises the question what is the the common or the red thread that runs throughout these texts if any if any thread if any common thread it brings up the question of and this all the more since the articles which are gathered in this book deal with topics and issues which if you take them at face value appear to be for the least very different even ill assorted uh, let's say the recurrence in the history of philosophy of the image of the philosopher who tumbles which gives its title to the book the problem of transgression in modern and contemporary literature orientation and disorientation as a philosophical and political state progress re-examined uh, through the lens of present mutations of the civilization of mores the recent yellow vest movement in france as a strange queer form of the return of class struggle, etc. Uh, things that, as a whole and in brief, appear as uh, making a mosaic or even a kaleidoscope more than a coherent essay having a distinct and one uh, object. So I think that in this conditions, the only thing I can argue having to acknowledge that all this seems to go all over the place is that what despite all would grant some sort of a semblance of unity to the book for want of homogeneity is the gesture the gesture or the philosophical mood, if you want, that inspired all the texts, all the texts the book is made of. The problem I repeatedly face when I have to deal with this issue, that kind of issue in English, is that the keyword, the password I have to refer to in this context does not pass from French into English. It's a very simple word. It's in French, actual, actuality. As it has been philosophically redeployed by Foucault and Deleuze, among others. In French, l'actuel, it's not and not at all actual in English, which means real. And l'actualité in French is not actuality in English, which means reality, as actually the adverb means in fact. L'actuel in the Foucaultian, Foucaultian and Eleusian acceptation of the term, as it is here my conductive thread. It is in brief what we have to question in our present, the present being here taken into consideration in the most extensive sense, since it is made of many dimensions and stratas. And since in particular, the past is stratified in it. We have to think actively and critically on our present as it is not only the milieu where we live, but what our condition, human condition, existential condition is made of. 
And this is a permanent watch. For we don't have only to inhabit this prison as, let's say, our niche, our home, but more complicated and trying, we have to equal to it since it is constantly, it constantly challenges us. And since it is made of all the tests we have to face. The present in that sense is not only our condition, that is what we would have just to adapt to or worse to resign ourselves to. It is for me before all our problem. It's our problem. That is what we have constantly and stubbornly to do our best to problematize. Problematizing means here not taking anything for granted, not considering that since things are what they are, they are what they should be. Uh, or if you want in more philosophical terms, that not taking for granted that the present conditions as they are, are based on the general principle of immanent and sufficient reason. But taking exactly the reverse angle and ask ourselves, what makes that things are what they are and not different? We have to uncouple our perception of the present from the notion, the very notion of necessity. This is what Foucault calls the criticability. It doesn't exist, but it's a word he coins. The criticability of the present as a general condition. Things are what they are, as they are, but this state of things does not rely on an iron law. Things could be different. And it is our job and responsibility as intellectuals, as philosophers, as academics, to imagine and claim how different they could be. And if need be, to make that tomorrow differs from today. That is to make that tomorrow is emancipated from today. What Foucault and Deleuze are advocating as philosophers of l'actuel, l'actualité, is quite paradoxical. As, let's say, modern that is active subjects of our modernity, or let's call it expeditiously uh, second or late modernity. As such, uh, we cannot be detached or absent-minded spectators of our present. We are basically immersed in it, or as Sartre would say, we are embarked. We are embarked. But on the other hand, what Foucault calls the sagittal attitude towards or in the present, that attitude he promotes. And here, sagittal means arrow like, something which is sharp. This attitude entails, of course, a certain distance. We cannot just stick to our present as permanent and blissfully happy, what Nietzsche called ja zaga, that is he who says yes, constantly yes to the present. We are, let's say, snorkeling in the sea of the present, and at the same time, we are actors and witnesses on permanent alert. 
which makes that we have more than often to take a distance from this present. That is uh, actions or conditions this present is made of and say towards these actions and conditions, say bluntly, no, we cannot accept this. This is intolerable. So very obviously, this is what makes the intensity, the intensity of our general relationship to the present. This tension between, let's say, immersion and on the other hand, distance, or sometimes, or very or, or often, rejection. It happens again and again that we have to break away from the present, that we have to denounce it, to abjure it, and live in it, because anyway, we have to live in it, like in exile, like dissidents and ban outlaws. What radical, uh, critical and radical intellectuals and academics have to do in order to orient themselves in a, const in a constantly labyrinthine present is to learn how to separate and make a difference between what really matters in this present, that is what is crucial, what is epoch making, what is a matter of life and death, and what is a bunch of false problems. What is pure futility, futility? What is diversion? What is superficial? What shines but does not matter? What is glitz, schmaltz, and strass, Yiddish? And this capacity to distinguish and hierarchize is all the more vital in a time or in an age which is placed under the sign of fetishism and spectacle, the ball. That is a topography where decoys of all kinds pullulate. The ability to discriminate, that is to distinguish what really matters in the present, in general and in particular, as far as we academics are concerned in the field of research or teaching, this is the thread that leads to what those who inspire me philosophically call actual actuality. In this regard, l'actuel, l'actualité is not something inert, something that would exist as just a fact in reality. It's rather an attitude towards the present. It's active and dynamic. For those who embrace it, have to be permanently on their guard. You have to learn how to resist to the avalanche of alleged facts, statements, ready-made thoughts and judgments that pour and flow on you, or should I say are dumped on you day after day. You need to have the guts to say no to all the discursive trash, the public discourse and the language of hegemony is made of. No, this is not how things are. This is not how things should be put. This is not how things should be said, how sentences should be arranged. This is not the right word. This is not a concept or an idea, but just a piece of mental chewing gum or marshmallow. 
this is an abyss of confusion and emptiness and emptiness. This is how domination speaks in its usual ventriloquist ways. We should have the guts to say this and to repeat it constantly. This is our responsibility as intellectuals, philosophers, and academics. In that sense, a genuine philosophy of l'actual actuality has very much in common with what Foucault calls resistance of conduct, insurrections of or in conducts. It means that basically thinking and acting in what Foucault calls the sagittal, arrow-like way in the present entails thinking and acting against the mainstream of this very present swimming against the stream in complete immersion, but in opposition to it by antagonizing it. It's a hard job. And this is what I try laboriously to enact and stage in this book. It's, this is that sort of inspiration, that sort of mood, which the book is made of. It is, yes, it's exhausting. It's not very often rewarding, but it's worth the effort. It's worth the stamina uh, one has to display for this because it's the only way that leads to what, what the, the French historian of Greece and Rome, Paul Vein, a very close friend of Foucault, calls very plainly l'intéressant, that is the interesting, the interesting, things of interest. The interesting, things of interest, it's a combination of, on the one hand, what matters, and on the other hand, what is captivating, what is exciting. This is the reward. I mean, when you succeed in, putting your finger on the interesting. It's the reward of those who have a passion for l'actualité, actual, those who really care for it. When they begin a research, then when they write an article, they do it because they know that there is a real, an urgent stake related to it. They work it out on, a front line, on a divide line, they are involved in a battle. Because research, I mean, real, genuine research, it's always antagonistic. If it is not, it doesn't matter. It's just for the show. It's just for the record. It's just for the CV. It's just for a career, a derision, a mockery. Academic research usually brews in the, in the tepid waters of consensus. And this is why it is, as a rule, so boring and forgettable. The articles which are put together in this volume may have not much in common in their manifest content. Some sort of a harlequin costume, a midlay made of my idefix obsessions. But for the least, they have something in common. Each of them is set on a front line. It's involved in a fight. Each of them is intended for writing a wrong, whatever it might be, intellectual, philosophical, moral, political, ethical. The care for actual can hardly be separated from the engagement, commitment to or for a cause. The commitment to it, the cause, the commitment to the cause, preferably a good one rather than a bad one is the backdrop of any attempt to take charge of our present as 
actualité or to distinguish what the traits of l'actuel are in the present. And this is probably why the caregivers of l'actuel usually are so dishoty. We have, we intellectual academics, etc., have a natural propensity to take for granted that what exists uh, has to be as it is. Uh, this phenomenon, general phenomenon, we could call it the gravity or the heaviness and the natural force of inertia of the state of things and of what is established as order. We all of us have a natural propensity to speak and arrange our thoughts in accordance with the general order of discourse or discourses or in terms which I borrow from uh, Maurice Blanchot or from Foucault, what speaks in general? What speaks is much less I, I, me, than one, one in French, on, or the neutral Heideggerian man, or S, it. Actually, the most difficult thing for us is to extract ourselves from the ruts, from the folds we are stuck in when we speak. In particular, when we really intend to make proper statements that matter and that make sense. Language in general comes from outside le dos of français in French, and overwhelms us. But it's not only a question of word and sentences. The real issue is that most of our thoughts and statements are pre-formated and normalized long before we utter them. Then how to, let's say, unfold the fold how to get out of the rut when we speak, when we write, when we teach. And this is where the stake of the actual resurfaces. We have to start from the presupposition that all what makes the order of things authoritative, natural, evident, legitimate, actually is contentious including language as a dimension of this order, we have to question relentlessly the rules of the game, including the rules of the talk, talking as a game. Wittgenstein. Wittgenstein says something which is very questionable on this issue. Wittgenstein says, I quote, the game consists of the rules by which it is played. But if so, and if only so, if this is the end of the story of the game, the only thing, then, then the only thing we have to do is to play the game, any game, according to the rules, happy or not of, being, of doing it. And this is probably why Wittgenstein has become the hero and the herald of conservative philosophy all around the planet beyond his Cambridge glass cell. But this is not how things are actually. And this is not how things go because as you probably know, we can cheat everybody cheats, we can falsify the rules, we can rock the rules, we can displace ourselves within the realm of the game. And by doing so, we can subvert the game itself. The game isn't just what it is, that is what the rules make it. 
it also is what comes in excess, what comes in surplus. That is what it, in Deleuzean terms, what it becomes with all what comes in excess. That is the affect of the players, the emotions, the tricks, of course, the cheating, the transgression, etc., etc. Just think for one minute of a popular sport like football, soccer in America, all around, very popular, all around the planet, constantly evolving, mutating. Besides, what would be more boring than a football match if the players would not try hard and constantly do it to trespass, to transgress the rules, or as Foucault would say, to play with the limits. So the hell with Wittgenstein and Wittgenstein's frozen analytical philosophy. If you want to get a good grip on the present and be up to it, you have to question the rules. And this is how the modern, in general, as a critical attitude takes, takes shape and, let's say, thickens. Recently, as I was reading Chen Xiu Chang's thesis, he is a doctoral student, a Taiwanese doctoral student at my former department of philosophy, Paris 8. And he will have his uh, viva in, uh, very in, in a few weeks, end of November. So just by reading his uh, very interesting thesis on Deleuze and Rancière, notion of the people, Deleuze and Rancière's philosophy, I came across a wonderful quotation from Deleuze and Guattari's book, Qu'est-ce que la philosophie? What is philosophy? A beautiful passage of the book, which either had missed when I read it or maybe had forgotten. It's about D. H. Lawrence, the author of Lady uh, Chatterley's Lover. And this is, uh, here is the quotation in, in my very approximate uh, Translation, Lawrence, uh, so Deleuze is speaking, but uh, it's uh, I, in direct talk, he, he makes Lawrence speak. Lawrence describes what poetry does or performs. The human endlessly, the humans, sorry, the humans endlessly manufacture an umbrella or maybe a sunshade, I don't know that shelters them and under which they design a firmament. I mean, a perimeter, I think a perimeter is a perimeter, a firmament, where they just write down their conventions and opinions. But the poet or the artist, he makes a, a slit, a split, a gap or something, a bridge. In the umbrella, he even sometimes tears it up so that some of the fresh and windy chaos can blow through it. Then you see come to rescue the crowd of the imitators who mend, that is repair the umbrella and the crowd of the chatterers who fill up the gap with opinions. New artists would always be needed to make new splits, new gaps, performing the necessary destruction bigger and bigger, maybe, and restore, give back, or give again. By doing that, their predecessor, the indescribable newness, we could not see anymore. Okay, my translation is very imperfect. It's awkward because my English is not up to Lawrence's and Deleuze's uh, Guattari's high style. But I imagine you see what the idea is. 
this brilliant glittering image concept or concept image of the umbrella of doxa and convention and the which we take shelter for thinking and speaking according to the rules and habits. The task which Lawrence assigns to poetry, I would like to assign it to philosophy too. That is, make a split in the umbrella of the order of discourses. Take a distance from those whose job is to mend the umbrella, relentless, without respite. So that, so that, let's say, the tyranny of static essences and identities can be shaken. And so that what Deleuze calls devenir, becoming, that is basically difference, otherness sweeps, can sweep into our present and subvert it. Um, as I recently uh, bruised through the article, this book is made of, my book is made of, in order to prepare this uh, discussion, this presentation, I felt somehow depressed for, it was some sort of a shock for me to discover how Franco-French centric, how Euro centric all this is in the end. And this is in spite of all my efforts to decenter myself and my work and to differ from what I'm supposed to be in terms of identity and let's say in terms of origin. Origin, origin, this is the word I detest par excellence. And strangely enough, I must say English as the language idiom, English does not seem to make the difference between what we call in French provenance, provenance in German Herkunft, and origin, origin in French, which in German is Ursprung. But still, the difference between the two, provenance, Herkunft, or origin, Ursprung in German, the difference between both, it's huge, it's absolutely huge for if you think about yourself, or if you think about a people, a community, in terms of origin exclusively, there is absolutely no room for becoming, devenir, difference, bifurcation. The only thing you have to do is to be true to the origin. You have to achieve it. You have to realize it. You have to deploy it. You have to implement it. Uh, that is to be what be be what we are, and to repeat, be what you are, be what you are, etc., etc. And this is the kingdom of essentialism, and it is. This is my innermost conviction. It is the deadliest philosophy of life one can imagine. Now. If you think about the past, if you think about the present and the future in terms of genealogy, genealogy is completely different. What you have to do is not to be true to your origin and make of your damned sacred roots a fetish, but what you have to do is to imagine and invent a future which is an act of creation made of displacements and mutation. This is what I try to do by living and working here, rather than uh, champing at the bit as an idle pensioner in a rat hole somewhere in my decaying country. But what I become aware of or what I became aware of by skimming through these texts is 
finally, the permanence, the persistence, the relentlessness of the fight between the tyranny of the origin and the effort to think and act in an horizon of becoming. That is not just development, but displacement, difference, and even, if possible, metamorphosis. I mean, one can travel, one can resettle, and try hard to see and think and write from a new shore, in a new perspective. But, but with all this, freeing oneself from the yoke of the origin, forgetting about the origin, this is a quite different story. And this is what the Franco-French centric tone of these essays testify for. What Lawrence calls the firmament, or maybe the diagram, the diagram uh, designed, circumscribed by the origin. This is what hand was, sorry, this is what one has to travel with in spite of all. This is what he or she has to bear on his on her back in spite of all his or her efforts to, let's say, travel light. It's not that easy to travel light. Then as a provisional conclusion, the only thing that is left to the academic traveler uh, me in the present circumstances, is to hope that his text will withstand the trouble. I mean, not be completely spoiled and become inedible and undrinkable like a French wine or a French cheese after a too long stay in a freezing baggage hall uh, of an aircraft trying from Paris to Taipei. And this, of course, in spite of all the efforts of the translators and of the master of ceremony, Professor Chu, to revive and enliven the book and to add all the necessary subtitles and comments, which are very badly needed for decoding and deciphering the subtext of the subtext of the text. What I'm sure of, one thing I'm sure of, after all these years I have spent here, is that translation is a cultural matter more than a purely and technically uh, linguistic issue. And this is the challenge this book has to face now after the translators did the job and did it as well as conceivable, will the book withstand the test of transplantation? Uh, that is, will it inspire its readers in a way or another? Will it have a future as a toolbox? as Foucault said, or be, will it be just like so many others, something of uh, curiosity from abroad, genuine more of the midly of exotic intellectual commodities the West uses to export to East Asia. What really matters when people read books and in particular philosophy, it is not what they learn from them, from these books. It's how they move on, the readers, how they move on starting from it and with it, with the book, leaning on the book. And once again here, I run into a problem of translation. What I really mean is 
in French, enchaîné sur. That is the way uh, you are one is or one is both captured and boosted by a book, or just by a passage in the book, or just a sentence, just one image in the book, and maybe something like a, a concept that would pop up, prop, pop up from the book. And finally, this is it, that only one reader, only one, only one reader would be seized and grabbed that way by an infinitesimal something, small thing in that book. And that would already be enough to be some sort of a blessing for. That's it, folks. Thank you. Thank you so much, Malin. Uh, we very much thank uh, Professor Professor in this very unpleasant environment. We uh, can give him such an amazing speech. We can see that he is a thinker who is a thinker. 是一个，当然随时有可能会感觉到 depression， 可是他有这个战斗力，他有不认输的这种持续<咳>质疑，就像他今天所说的，对于现实永远不会就简单的接受，要保持这些呃怀疑和批判的距离，然后要去思考，在我们所习惯的。环境之外的，啊，当然这些有些时候是摔了一跤之后会去想的问题，呃，不过我不是在开玩笑，而是他今天提到的非常多问题，的确是，呃，我们可以去思考的，包括如何不会以自己的 origin 来限制自己，如何敢于去思考我们可以成为什么，或者说如何可以去接受不同的。displacement 不同的这个 shock 或者不同的呃变化啊，那这些都是在 encounter 中间会遭遇呃发生的变化。那或许这个哲学家在被撞翻的时候，他去想的一些不一样的问题。这个我们就接下来听一下朱老师朱元洪。他读这本书之后有什么样的一些想法和启发，或者写完了这个序之后，还要跟博萨、阿兰、博萨提一些什么问题？那啊，朱颖就开始，你要用中文还是英文？中文、英文？呃，对我，我想呃，要求呃，主席的这个允许啊，呃，我。我就用英文，呃，因为我大概在想的，呃，回应就是说回应，呃，阿兰的时候，大概，呃，还是比较脑海里面都转的还是英文。好，好，那伟勋就帮忙一下，那大家就还是听一下中文的口译。好 okay. ，Go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, welcome everyone. Uh, and I ask uh, uh, the host permission to uh, use English, but because uh, well, uh, unfortunately, uh, the lingua franca between me and Alan Broza is uh, English. Uh, you know, so uh, because uh, many of uh, uh, my response or some uh, some remains uh, to be uh, communicated or uh, checked with uh, uh, Alan uh, are still in my mind uh, in English. So uh, I will. I will uh, use uh, English first, but uh, maybe uh, later, uh, got, if I got time, I will uh, you know, uh, recapitulate it in uh, Chinese uh, yeah, for an outline. Okay. Uh, Wei Xun, uh, can help you translate. Ah, okay. Yeah. Uh, so, can you translate? Yeah. That is, I translate English. Uh, 
呃，可以嘛哈。好，那就说好，那我就用英文好了。啊 ，OK，OK，、okay. okay, 好的。呃，哇，呃 ，Alain's presentation 呃、uh, ，is almost another philosophical uh articles uh commentaries uh yeah, but uh, I uh I think it's very interesting uh because I will I will bring in uh bring it in uh into my Consideration of uh, uh, what aesthetics uh, is. First, uh, first, I would say that um, I read uh, his uh, uh, the tra Chinese translation uh, of uh, his text and cross uh, checked with the, uh, the original French text uh, and uh, wrote my uh, in introduction uh, from. Late uh, from late June to mid July, uh, which is parallel with the the pandemic uh, uh, high wave in Taiwan. So, uh, but but I think this uh, goes uh, uh, goes well uh, together uh, because uh, uh, you know I I can uh, devote myself uh, emerge uh, emerge. Immerse myself uh, in the text uh, in in my writings, uh, but and, and every day just to, just to spend maybe uh, eighty or ninety minutes uh, walking in the woods. Okay, a uh, few a uh, few questions I would like uh, uh, because uh, I characterize uh, Alain's uh, some uh, uh, some chapters. Uh, in my way, but uh, I'm not sure. Till uh, to now, I'm not sure whether it's uh, uh, precise or uh, or uh, receptible uh, by him. Uh, and also, I was uh, have uh, something to explain. Uh, yeah, why I'm uh, I'm doing so. Uh, well, the last section, uh, the last in the last section of my preface, I said that. Uh, uh, Roughly uh, speaking, I was I will uh, characterize this collection of uh, uh, philosophical commentaries uh, is a collection of uh, aesthetics essay, okay, um, and that uh, aesthetic, uh, of course, uh, is not uh, the ordinary understanding uh, through the translation uh, of. Uh, and uh, the you uh, the used uh, uh, connotations uh, in Chinese as mei xue. Uh, so I expanded uh, I expanded the, from uh, what I re, uh, what I uh, I was enlightened by uh, Jean Francois Liotta, okay? uh, you know, and, and of course uh, I'm uh, this is my first question because also because. Uh, uh, the time slot, this uh, uh, is uh, the time slot of uh, my uh, seminar on aesthetics and the societies for uh, this semesters. So uh, the uh, the students uh, in that seminars are all present here. So I uh, I'm also uh, glad to have the opportunity to uh, to uh, say something more about. Uh, the aesthetics. Um, yeah, Alain, uh, Alain just uh, uh, present uh, the French concept of uh, the lecture, uh, lecturalité. Uh, I think uh, I think this is uh, uh, this is also uh, you know uh, remind me of uh, uh, how Lyotard uh, bring uh, this uh, issue. Uh, although uh, Alain. Uh, did not mention the Leotards, but I think, uh, you know, uh, uh, for example, Leotard comments saying that, uh, you know, uh, the aesthetics uh, of the past century is uh, less about uh, the beautiful, uh, but more about uh, the sublime. And the sublime, uh, particularly, he is emphasizing of uh, the present. Now, I think the uh, uh, lecture, uh, 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 yeah. Uh, so he defined it now, uh, the present is one of the temporal ex ecstasies. Uh, 
is a stranger to consciousness, uh, what deposes consciousness, in what consciousness cannot, uh, is what consciousness cannot formulate yet. Okay, uh, so uh, he's talking about something happens uh, in German, uh, that's uh, das etwas geschieht. geschieht. Uh, so uh, I think in this, uh, in this respect, uh, is very much uh, into the, uh, the question uh, brought out by Alain uh, for, uh, for, the context, uh, for the context, yes. But uh, I still uh, wish to know whether uh, Alain th think my characterization of uh, this um, collection uh, uh, as a collection of uh, aesthetics essays, uh, yeah. Uh, okay, the second, uh, the second uh, issue uh, is, uh, okay, so called the lost French philosophers, uh, the lost French philosophers uh, in the book, in the, art, in, the, uh, in the articles, Alain mentioned about uh, Michel Foucault, uh, you know, uh, uh, the dissolution or uh, giving up uh, of the, uh, the old orientation. And also, uh, he uh, he shows how Deleuze uh, remarks that uh, that kind of uh, situation, that, uh, the lot, uh, the experience of loss, is a uh, is experience of uh, or, or limit uh, limit experience. Okay, so uh, I think uh, he characterized it very well, uh, and I uh, added up. Uh, the other two, uh, which is uh, Lyotard, Jean-François Lyotard, and uh, uh, Jean Baudrillard. Uh, I, from, from my readings, I, can, uh, I know that uh, Alain Bursa uh, don't have a favorite uh, uh, opinions on Jean Baudrillard. But nevertheless, I bring up uh, these uh, two, uh, not because of uh, uh, they are my favorite. Of course, uh, I, I I find that their works uh, are charming, uh, but uh, it is because uh, during the 80s, uh, probably uh, till mid 90s, uh, that's, uh, you know, the, the whole uh, 80s is my uh, graduate uh, study years in, in the United States. And the, the most uh, uh, interesting thing is, uh, you know, uh, how uh, the English word uh, receive these French uh, thinkers. Uh, for example, uh, before 1985, I think uh, there's a lot of book, a lot of book receiving Foucault, uh, like you know, uh, with the Marxism, with the structuralism, with the uh, hermeneutics. Uh, I think that because these are what uh, you know. Uh, uh, the philosophical branch uh, familiar in English world. So, but actually uh, later after 1985, um, these books uh, becomes less uh, relevant because uh, actually uh, I don't think that it's a, a, an adequate uh, reception of uh, uh, like a mission for code. But uh, uh, since then uh, there's a, emerged a lot of book uh, characterizing uh, these uh, French philosophers, uh, including Foucault, Deleuze, but also Lyotard and Baudrillard. Yes, these four, uh, like a gang, the Gang of Four, uh, you know, they are labeled by uh, the uh, so-called, uh, the author, I would say that the traditional orthodox uh, Marxism, or, not, or just the Marxism in the English world, particularly the, Brit the British uh, Marxists, uh, the British left. And they characterize, uh, characterize it as uh, postmodernists. But uh, of course, we know that only uh, Jean-François Lyotard uh, wrote several books uh, with that title, the postmodern, uh, postmodern conditions, but post uh, uh, postmodern fable something. Uh, and uh, the interviewers uh, interviewed um, Michel Foucault, uh, Gilles Deleuze, and uh, Jean Baudrillard, 
uh, for about how uh, about the labels of uh, the postmodern uh, the postmodern lab labels, and these three uh, ha don't have any clue about it. You know, so they are not using it. They are not responding. It. Uh, so th that is uh, totally actually a negative uh, labels uh, created or uh, uh, you know created by the uh, Marxist uh, or a Marxist uh, in the English world. So it is then uh, you know uh, taking them together. Okay, uh, Foucault, uh, Deleuze, uh, Lyotta, and Baudrillard. Uh, always uh, taking them as, uh, as something uh, really lost uh, or, uh, or uh, consciously, consciously, willingly uh, stay in the superficial uh, level or something like uh, not uh, pursuing the uh, whole picture and in depth of uh, what uh, the world uh, uh, is going on uh, according to the uh, your, uh, Marxist uh, wisdom, okay? Yeah, so, so I'm uh, bringing this, uh, I, I'll just explain this uh, to Alain. Uh, it is because uh, in the English world, they are grouped together uh, as something lost French thinkers. Yeah, okay. Uh, okay, other uh, issues, um, for example, like, um, well, there's one thing that really marginal for, for uh, Alain uh, is, uh, you know, uh, uh, characterizing. I think it's uh, in in the uh, articles about uh, uh, Huang Beixing, uh, Huang Beixing, uh, Huang Beixing uh, the new interpretation of uh, uh, the Yellow Vest movement in uh, in, in France. Uh, I think uh, Alain, uh, you know, uh, articulated something that uh, uh, there's a still. An effort to try try to uh, escape or uh, abandon the old uh, Marxist cast cast or inter mode of interpretation of the uh, of the uh, movement. Uh, but uh, yeah, before that, I think he is uh, you know this is a very marginal. Uh, he he's, he's saying that okay, perhaps uh, that kind of uh, type of uh, historical explanation uh, fit for uh, some. Like a real, real proletarian uh, uh, revolution uh, happened in China, uh, or even during the Cultural Revolution, or even uh, for uh, Fidel Castro's uh, uh, Cuba, uh, Cuban Revolution. And uh, I would say that uh, no, I will not uh, even uh, accept this. Uh, you know, this uh, background. I think is a. a is uh, still maybe presented in, this is not presented by Alain, but Alain uh, just uh, put on the background saying that, uh, you know, in, uh, in French, uh, people are, are moving from that, but uh, acknowledge maybe, uh, you know, that model is uh, uh, relevant to, to some. Uh, yeah, but uh, I would say that, uh, since uh, 2000, I think there's a lot, many books, very, very good uh, studies. Uh, maybe I'll, later I can uh, cut and paste uh, of uh, the, the bibliography, uh, you know, uh, of scholars uh, using the declassified uh, uh, materials uh, in uh, post-Soviet Union and uh, some very good uh, studies uh, of uh, like uh, the few years after 1917, uh, the, real, uh, the real working class or uh, factory workers uh, in, in, in Moscow and something. Uh, so to present that uh, actually in terms of uh, the revolution of uh, proletariat revolution or working class, uh, it is true maybe in 1917, uh, but uh, then uh, after that uh, comes the Stalinist uh, that really destroy or abolished the autonom autonomous of working class uh, uh, political force. Uh, so, uh, so they characterize it as uh, some something 
uh, as a, the Stalinist as a counter-revolutionary uh, to the working class. Uh, yeah. And similar things happened uh, if you study uh, the Fidel Castro. Uh, the, the, their guerrilla is uh, not uh, a working class uh, uh, you know, a movement. And when they uh, gained uh, the, uh, the political power, they, uh, uh, you know, uh, they co-opted it and, and abolished uh, the autonomous, uh, you know, uh, the working class uh, uh, political force. Same thing goes in uh, the culture, the, uh, uh, Mao Zedong's uh, Cultural Revolution. Uh, of course, he is using, he is assigning uh, the, uh, uh, himself as, uh, as a, a, you know, uh, the opposite, the, uh, uh, the authority uh, or the opposite to the so-called revisionism. And uh, uh, the revolution, revisionism is something uh, betrayal uh, of the proletariat revolution. So he is uh, occupying that, uh, uh, that position uh, and proclaim or name the revolution, uh, the so-called the great proletarian cultural revolution. Uh, uh, but we know that uh, you know uh, the act in the actuality, uh, he is he confronted, uh, he encountered uh, a very threatening uh, working class uh, uh, protest to him, uh, and scared him, uh, and uh, in Wuhan, in Wuhan, and then he fled to uh, Shanghai and uh, find uh, picked uh, Wang uh, Wang Hongwen the uh, the. The youngest member of the Gang of Four later, uh, you know, because uh, his uh, working class, uh, uh, you know, uh, status and uh, you know, but actually, uh, as an organizer of Wenge uh, Xiaogu, the, the the Cultural Revolution Task Force, uh, you know, uh, which is not uh, you know uh, from proletariat at all. Of course, uh, I'm sorry, I'm spending a little bit long on this very marginal uh, opinion. So, uh, so I just, uh, uh, yeah, uh, address that uh, one of the comments. Okay, uh, maybe there's one more, uh, one more to go. As uh, I also introduced uh, to to uh, make a distinction uh, between uh, between uh, so-called uh, uh, government by and gov uh, government to, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, I, uh, I, uh, I define them as something uh, 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 I introduced it one, uh, you know, uh, one, uh, one uh, concept which is quite important in phenomenology, uh, yeah, uh, philosophical phenomenology and sociology, uh, which is uh, uh, intersubjectivity. Uh, so uh, uh, it's uh, very interesting. Uh, for example, uh, the government uh, by uh, you know uh, from so-called uh, the uh, the ethical codes in ancient China to Machiavelli, Machiavelli's uh, you know uh, you know uh, the, the strategies of uh, uh, giving uh, you know. Uh, the, uh, uh, with uh, threatening with some uh, cruelty or giving uh, giving some uh, uh, grace uh, uh, so so that people will obey them so all these uh, are uh, still in the domain of intersubjective uh, you know or uh, we can say that uh, governed uh, governed by but uh, you know uh, with that to take away or uh, to uh, to abstract it from the situation in which uh, you know uh, uh, the ruling, uh, you know, uh, the people's relation can interact in the same situation and can perceive, uh, you know, uh, some, uh, you know, some uh, inner feeling or the uh, truthfulness uh, or uh, you know, uh, agree uh, or uh, don't agree or those, all those, uh, you know, uh, things. Uh, which uh, like uh, uh, sociology like uh, uh, George Zimmel or Irving Goffman are presenting so thoroughly, you know, uh, all these, uh, you know, uh, all these uh, we are still uh, calling, uh, we can call it the, the, the uh, governing by, uh, the governing by, but uh, now uh, to our time, 
uh, you know, uh, I think uh, Michel Foucault already uh, described the, De the Bentham uh, panopticon, and that is already uh, uh, something that uh, uh, abolished uh, the situation in which uh, people ha can have uh, intersubjective, uh, 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 but uh, it's still a very powerful or very effective way of control. Um, yeah, so uh, yeah, so that's uh, also uh, uh, one point. I, I, I think I just uh, briefly mentioned that. And uh, I just uh, uh, wish to know uh, on this point, uh, characterizing uh, the collection as a collection of aesthetics uh, es uh, essays uh, or some, uh, those uh, comments I just mentioned. I, I, I just uh, wish to get the chance uh, to hear how uh, Alain, uh, you know, think about it, uh, uh, agree it or not, or even opposing, uh, <laughs> or uh, you know, uh, uh, my characterization. Uh, okay, I, I just uh, uh, stop here. Uh, 我不晓得需不需要做中文的这个outline。可能不需要了，我们我们就相信呃，we uh, oh, okay. uh, should uh, trust. Uh, we change uh, interpretation. We will leave a little bit Okay. Now, we 那个阿朗用英文讲的话会有点奇怪很荒谬因为我跟他共同语言其实是法文那如果我用我不太会说的这个说的不好的英文来说的话蛮憋脚的那不如就像刚才刘老师说的那就相信那个陈伟勋他可
呃略微说一点点哦。那说一点点，这个并不是呃呃，就是说我没有无意在这里呢，就是铺开一个呃呃完全哲学的讨谈论，然后但是呢呃，在呼应那个呃。波萨教授的整个谈法当中呢，我觉得呃有一点确实，我是呃颇有感受哦，就是呃如果拿这个书一开始所引的那个 Hans Blumenberg 的那个呃讲那个呃呃 t a l l s 被他的这个女仆嘲笑的这一个问题哦，那我们可以看到就是说 Hans Blumenberg 他的一个呃整个工作的呃核心概念呢，其实就是。德文的 v i r k l i c h k e i t 啊，就是 reality 或者是 actuality 哦。那这一个看法呢，其实呃，如果我们连到的是一个黑格尔脉络的话，哦，就是这个呃，凡合理必现实，凡现实必合理哦，就是这个呃 ，what is rational is actual， what is actual is rational 这样的一个呃命题来说的话哦，那在黑格尔当中的这一个。关于 actuality 哦，他在德文的那个 v i r k l i c h k e i t 的这个问题里面呢，它其实就包含着呃两个意思哦，就一个意思呢，就是它是跟 work 有关系哦 ，work 呢就是呃呃这个希腊文的 a i r g o n 就是呃它被产生出来的东西哦。那第二个呢，就是它是这个呃被实现的东西哦，就是 fair v i r fair v i r k l i c h 哦，那就是呃 actualize。的这样的一个一个做法哦，那所以呢，就是说，在呃当代的这个谈法当中，如果重新要来看呃现实的这个问题的时候呢，哦，它其实背后我们就同时会问两种问题。第一个问题呢，就是现实的合理性是什么？哦，那刚才其实这个呃波萨教授有一个很强烈的一个主张，就是说抵抗哦，或者是。不轻易接受现实，其实就是在质问合理性在哪边哦。如果现实是不合理的，我们不应该接受它；如果现实是不合理的，我们应该要改变它；如果现实是这个应该需要行动介入的，我们应该要投入这个呃这个呃现实的呃改变当中。可是第二个呢，就是说，在这个呃凡现实必合理，或者是凡合理必现实的这一个呃作为工作。的这个意义底下呢，它其实包含的另外一个呃，对于理性的要求，就是说理性的介入，它包含着一个自一个呃内在的规则哦。那就像刚才这个呃，波萨教授有提到的，就是说维根斯坦所讲的那一类的规则或者理性规则哦，要被拆毁哦。但是呢，呃，不管如何，就是拆毁规则的行动，它必须也是有它的合理性。哦，所以呢，就这点来说，就是行动本身也需要在制定规则，或者要产生规则，或者产生合理性。哦，那这个问题其实对我来说，就是一个呃蛮蛮重要的一个思考。哦，也就是说，呃，我们在像刚才呃朱老师有提到，就是在他的序里面哦，那刚才在回应当中也特别有呃加强这一点，就是他把。这个呃，波萨这本书呢，解读为是一个美学的哈，或者包含呃感受的的这样的一个著作哦。那呃，而他也就是朱老师也提到 subline 哦，那提到 subline 呢，呃，其实就有一个有趣的问题，就是说呃 ，subline 的规则或者 subline 的的原则，其实是在欣赏。高山欣赏那个呃雪崩，欣赏大海的波浪滔滔当中呢，呃，它其实是没有限制身于危险当中的哦。那而这个理论的兴趣，就是说这个呃在呃面对现实的时候，它带着一种理论的要求的时候呢，或者合理性的要求的时候呢，它其实是需要有一个间隔，就是跟现实保持一个距离。而这个距离呢，就是对于能够欣赏那个呃 sublime 的人来说呢，他其实是他站在岸边，他并没有被浪卷走，哦，所以他可以说哦，这个如何的崇高，如何的壮美，哦，那面对现实的的思的思考也是如此，就是说要思考现实的合理性的时候
他如果要带着一个理论化的思考的同时，他其实要跟现实保持一定的距离哦。当然，那个距离呢是刚好在一个范围内，那个范围可能很窄，就是他要是有感，就是像刚才那个朱老师有讲。哦，就是他在美学上是有感的，他能够触动他的感受。哦，那在法文来说呢，就是他是 s o m e t h i 哦，或者是喝 s o m e t h i 能够重新感受到，呃，这个现实对他的要求，能够感受到现实的种种的呃感觉。哦，可是同时呢，他又要能够重新导向。不单单只是沉默在现实当中，而是从抽离现实当中重新对现实发言，或者重新对现实行动。哦，那这个框架其实刚好就是在这个书最前面一开始所讲的那个呃谈 orientation 的问题。哦，就是有这个 disorientation 哦，跟那个呃 reorientation 的这个一整个关于这个 orientation 的的讨论。哦，那。我们的呃，我第一个感受当然就是从这边而来哦，就是说呃，作为一个呃，我是改装者哦，就原先是学 engineering 哦，我原先原先是学工程，后来去学哲学的人哦，某个意义底下呢，我是从非常现实的世界抽离出来，进入到哲学的世界哦，那可是呢？呃，吊诡的另外一个问题是这样子，就是说，在台湾呢，哲学作为一个呃 mission impossible， 作为一个呃难以被接近、难以被接受的一个学问呢，正是因为哲学能够对当时的呃国民党政府哦，或者是带着威权式的政府呢，带着许多的质疑，所以呢，学哲学基本上是冒着危险的，或者因为危险，所以很多人被。这个被拒绝哦，或者被不鼓励哦，得得得呃，让鼓励他去哦，就是不被鼓励去学习哲学哦。那这个事实上就是我的第二个问题，就跟第二个问题连接的第二个问题，就是哲学家的处境哦，或者是哲学家到底在现实当中面对政治、面对呃体制哦，他能够呃。或者说他实际的状况是怎么样？那呃，从台湾的经验来说，或者大陆经验可能更惨哦，因为大陆有许多这个呃哲学家必须要附和当权者，不管是从毛泽东的时代一直到当代习近平的时代哦，哲学家的角色哦，或者大陆非常蓬勃的哲学学院，基本上呢是呃必须要以当权者的意识形态为喉舌。哦，他是必须要当他的这个呃传声筒的这种方式呢，来呃进行哲学工作哦，所以呢，就是说这个呃哲学家所遭受的危险这件事情，在一个政治体制里面哦，有一个吊诡，就是说那个政治体制呢，呃，必须要有一定的健全，到某个程度，哲学家的性命哦。能够有最少的担保的时候，哦，那么这时候呢，哲学家的批判它有可能导向一个公共性的一个讨论。可是呢，在极端的情况，就是台湾曾经过去经历过这个情况，而我小时候、年轻的时候，我想刘老师或者朱老师都是经历过这样的一个情境，就是呃，没有哲学，哦，不可能有哲学，要不然就是被阉割的哲学，要不然就是被这个只能谈。那个科学的哲学只能看分析性的哲学的这一种看法哦，那所以呢，关于这个哲学家与危险这件事情哦，或者哲学家面在这个理论跟现实之间哦，他带着危险的这一个呃角色哦，其实是我觉得呃，我一方面很有感哦，二方面呢也觉得这个问题其实，在台湾或者在呃。亚洲不同的脉络底下，不同的时代，哦，它有不同的呃处置方式，它有不同的面对的条件，跟在法国所面对的条件呢是呃有相当大的不同哦。那当然，呃，这个部分当然有需要再多多谈哈、哦。那呃，那第二个问题
就是呃，第应该算第三个啦，哦，因为第一个问题其实我讲的两个方面，哦，那第二个问题其实是跟那个呃呃所谓谁说话这件事情有关系的，哦，因为呢，就是说这个部分是这个呃呃阿朗波萨教授呢，他呃在刚才简短的呃演讲当中有提到，哦，在分析 becoming 的概念的时候，其实。它蕴含着这个呃说法，而这个说法当然是一个福勾殿跟这个德勒殿式的的说法，就是说，呃，就像那个 it rains 哦，就是呃，它是一个非 impersonal 的哦，是一个 u n p e r s o n a l 啊，就是它在在讲这种事件性的时候，哦，我们不着重在它。这个人格性的意味哦，所以在讲呃这个呃 becoming， 在讲那个 d e v o n i e 的这一种看法当中呢，呃，它有一种非人的意味在里面哦。那所以呢，在这种非人的意味里面呢，它当然就是希望排除在讲我，在讲 I 哦，在讲 m o r 的时候呢，呃，有一种过于人格性的坚持的这种看法。哦、那这个我基本上是同意的、哦、可是呢，如果我们去看。那个呃呃，波萨在讲那个呃，刚才朱老师有提到的哦，就是这个被治理与受管辖哦，就是这个呃 ，gu gouvernement par et gouvernement a 这一种区分的时候呢，事实上我们可以发现，刚好这个有一个呃，如果呃，我我觉得这个朱老师的解释是蛮贴近那个呃阿朗原先谈的那个原文的、啊、哈、哦，就是。呃，有交互主体性的哦，其实就是有人格的哦，就是说，在那个呃 g o u v e r n e b a r 在这个呃 formula， 在这个 formula 底下呢，它其实是带着人格性的，它是 personal 的，它是有 intersubjectivity， 或者它有 subjectivity 在里面。可是呢，在那个 g o u v e r n e a r 在呃 g o u v e r n m e n t a 哦，受辖制。的这一个使用当中呢，它其实是一个非人的、一个无主体的哦，一个不可见的一个一个情况哦，所以呢，刚好在这一个看法当中呢，好像呃，我觉得有一个呃概念上的刚好呃颠倒的一个对的一个对调了哦，那我觉得在这一点上呃，或许呃应该是重新去问一种问题，就是我并没有指引这个呃。阿兰·博萨教授在这个问题上面是不是自我矛盾？哦，我希望问的问题不是这个问题，是在呃前面的那个面对现实的这个问题上面，以及在面对这个呃 becoming 流变或者生成变化的这一个呃哲学的思考当中，哦 ，humanity 或者 personality 的位置在哪边？哦，就是 activist。它是一个 personal 还是 impersonal 的哦的这样的一个问题哦，就是这个如何重新界定在这样的一个政治行动当中哦 ，person 的角色或者是这个呃 humanity 的角色哦，这个大概就是呃我大概呃很简短的哦，就是说说明一下我呃看到的呃的几个呃。或许可以，呃，再再多加讨论的，好、哦，那呃，那就这本书来说，我当然是呃，在很我的那一个呃，算是推荐吗？还是那个很短的那个书里面哦，其实大概可以已经略有呃介绍一下，或者说指出了我对于这个呃呃安波萨教授的写作方式哦。那这个写作方式，如果用我刚才的那个说法呢，就是说，呃，它不是提供理论，哦，就是说它不是一个 theoretical 的著作，哦，那不是这个 theoretical 意味着呢，就是说这是一个呃 engaged 哦，它是一个 engaged 哦的一个著作，哦，所以呢，这一种 engaged work 哦，这一种。呃，设身于其中的这个著作呢，使得他所采采取的那个呃呃用用语
，然后他的风格，乃至于他希望呃导出来的关于这个呃 orientation 这上面呢，哦，就是能够引导读者的这件事情上面呢，其实是没有，就是说好的意义的，没有理论的意义，哦，那而。相对的呢，它是一个善动之书。如果我们把善动理解为是一种 moving， 哦，就是就像如同刚才这个呃安博萨教授结论的时候所提到的，只要有一个读者，他在阅读这本书的时候有一个句子、有一个字受到感动的时候呢，那么这本书对他来说，这个翻译就具有呃，就算是成功。哦，那就这点来说，我觉得呃。某个意义底下，我是被煽动、哦、也就是说，如果我们作为一个呃安稳的要坐在书桌上的这种哲学家来说的话，那当然我们随时是等着被撞翻的、啊哦、那所以那个呃，我在阅读的时候，当然是充分感受到那个呃波萨教授、哦、他很深沉的呃反讽。这个反讽呢，不是他在，不只是他在反讽那个呃他所面对的欧洲哲学传统、哦相对的呢，就是说我作为读者，我是感受到的那个很深的反讽，而且我涉入其中，而且我觉得这个我作为这个呃哲学的这个行业呢，呃，必须要接受这个呃反讽的的这个呃的这些代价哦。那但是就这个意义来说，我觉得呃安博萨的那个呃呃文笔是非常老辣的哦，就是呃那个朱老。朱老师刚才好像他在续或者在那个呃推介的那个里面，好像有用类似用到类似的词哦，就是我觉得这个呃这一种很呃辛辣的哦，而且这个呃这个老而弥坚式的希腊的辛辣哦，这一种呃做法呢，就是呃过去在我们的传统哦，比如说胡秋元的时代、徐富官的时代哦，他们可能很曾经。扮演有这样的角色，而现在公共知识分子哦的这个逐渐丧失，这一种传统的确在台湾是是呃逐渐丧失了、哦。那我觉得就这边来说，我是受益良多。哎，好，那我就先讲到这边。非常精彩，谢谢冠明。呃、uh, ，Alan， do you need a short break before you uh offer your response? Unmute yourself. Unmute. You see the 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 red uh icon microphone. You should uh, you, or you can you can ask uh Leo to do it for you. Or. Uh, the office can unmute. Uh, you cannot hear you, uh, Alan. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good. 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 Okay. Good. Okay. Do, okay. Do, okay. do we continue or do you need? Can a... we make? Uh, can we have a brief stop for two minutes? Yeah. Right. Uh, five okay. minutes. Okay. Two uh, minutes. Two or three. Two minutes. Uh, yeah. everyone. Uh, can come back when, uh, after two minutes. All right. Okay. 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 Good. Thank you. Yeah. See you.
So, Alan, are you ready? Okay. Uh, just go ahead. Uh, 我们继续开始。呃，布洛萨教授会提供呃他的一些回应，或者是一些呃他的呃延伸的讨论想法。啊 ，OK， go ahead. Is it okay now? Yes. Yes. Okay. Good. Good. So, I will answer Professor Chu uh, first, and then I will answer uh, Huang Guanming. Uh, so there were about four questions in uh, uh, Professor Chu Professor Chu's uh, uh, intervention talk. So. First issue, it was about aesthetics. Aesthetics. Uh, okay, I, I feel in complete agreement with Chu, with uh, 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 Professor Chu on that issue, uh, provided we consider that basically aesthetics here is uh, inseparable from um, perception and affects. As aesthetics are at stake for me, aesthetics are at stake, are a stake as soon as we take into consideration that uh, our uh, perception of the present uh, is not only a matter of, let's say, politics, but also of feelings, of feelings, of affects, uh, because it's related to, let's say, uh, all the issues of the, the tangible. Uh, so what I mean by this is, is very simple. Aesthetics is not about what is beautiful or not. It's about the way we perceive that something in the present is acceptable or not. Um, if it is not acceptable, it is just ugly. Uh, and then, of course, immediately we see that it is a matter of aesthetics. I'm very sensitive to that. When people talk bullshit about political matters or others, uh, they don't only, it, it's not only that what they say does not make sense. It's also that it's ugly and disgusting. And ugly and disgusting, this is the realm of aesthetics. So in that sense, yes, aesthetics is totally correlated to politics and philosophy. I'm very sensitive when I read to the style, the style, the way people write. And of course, what I constantly feel is that my judgment on the content, on the statements in what I read uh, is not separable from the feeling I have that the style is horrible, or on the contrary, that this is, I would say, high style, is beautifully written, is beautifully written. So um, in that sense, yes. I, well, usually in, in what I write, I, I'm 
I understand why you asked this question because I never mentioned, I almost, I think I almost never mentioned the term, the very term aesthetics in my article. This is just because I'm obsessed by politics. Okay, so I'm always going again and again on political issues, political concepts. But in terms of sensitivity, in terms of feeling and affects, I'm absolutely convinced. I, can't, I completely agree with what you suggest that yes, it is also politics are also philosophy is also a matter of aesthetics because it's related to the way we move in the tangible world and feel about it as simple as that. Uh, okay. The second question was on Jotar and Baudrillard. So they are missing links, the missing links, the missing links in, in, my, in, my, in my articles. Okay, first answer. When you, uh, okay, when, when you write on theoretical issues, political issues, etc., etc., philosophical issues, you have to lean on something. Uh, you need help. You constantly need help. You need support. And of course, the most convenient way to do things is to rely on very, very reliable friends. I mean, friends in general theoretical terms, people you can rely on. And okay, they are your background. They are the backdrop on which you find that you get used to, okay, to lean on them, to ask for help, to ask them to help you. And of course, since the more familiar you are with their writing, the easier, the easiest it is for you. So the others, which I forget, which I don't mention, this does not mean at all that I'm hostile to them or that I don't care about them, and not even that I have not read them. I have, not as carefully as I have read Foucault, for example, concerning Baudrillard and Yota, but I have, of course, not all of them, but okay. And uh, they are somewhere behind. They are somewhere behind, and they sometimes Sometimes, not as often as Foucault or Deleuze, but they sometimes are good helpers. For example, Yota, I could not write without using the notion of différent, which I borrow from Yota. It's a key notion for me. I constantly refer to it, mention it, and think to it. I need it constantly for thinking about politics, I cannot live without Jotar's different, which is untranslatable into English. I don't know what they say, dispute or whatever. No, it's not like, it's different with a D at the end. So, okay. Um, let me just tell you briefly. When I was a student in uh, winter, uh, autumn, fall, uh, winter 68, at the University of Nanterre. The only course I followed week after week without missing any of them was the course by Lyotard. For the others, including Paul Ricoeur, I had no time because I was so busy in preparing the revolution. But Lyotard, no, I would not have missed one course. So I'm close to him, but for various reasons. Okay, I, uh, uh, I'm not mentioning as often as I could, be. but, and there is another thing. What a philosopher, a theoretician in general should be very careful about is to avoid that any 
of his concepts become a slogan or a mantra in the public discourse. And Yota was not or was careless enough to send put on the market that damn notion of postmodern, which is such with it's such uh, a mess, I must I must say, because it just became something for you know, you know, and look at the way on the the disaster it is on the US campuses, constantly referring to French philosophy as uh, postmodern, blah blah blah, postmodern, including everything in a big bag, where all the cats are the same, and etc. etc. So this we should refrain from doing. And Lyotta was not careful enough. So this is something which makes, but maybe sometimes uh, I sometimes resent him. And about Baudrillard, it's, a, it's, it's the same. And no, it, it's even worse. I like him, okay, because when I read it with him, he cannot harm me. But I know that when other people read him, he will harm them. It's not easy to explain. Uh, because, okay, I'm familiar with um, because I know how he works and thinks. I know that he, he's very provocative. He was, sorry, he, he, he passed away. He was very provocative. He, he liked to do it. His irony was extreme. Uh, I, I'm very serious in comparison to him. He was constantly uh, joking and making and, uh, provocations. Okay. But uh, most of people who read him did not understand that exactly. So when he said things like, oh, the attack on the towers in New York, that was a beautiful piece of art or whatever, or it, just, it, was, it was just a spectacle or things like that. Uh, he couldn't imagine the effect of such a provocation. Okay, among us, it's okay, I understand. But in the media sphere, it's a disaster. So he was not careful enough. I remember once I saw in the metro, uh, uh, in, 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 in Paris, there was an advertisement for, I don't know what commodity. Uh, the advertisement consisted in a quotation from a book by Baudrillard. And when I saw that, I told me, oh, this you earn. This is your fault because you did something wrong. You did something wrong for uh, uh, producing, making that effect, making it possible, making that thing possible, that horror possible, you did something wrong, my dear Baudrillard. But okay, I like him. <laughs> so it's like that. So now concerning yellow vest, the question about the yellow vest, it's, it, it's uh, uh, I understand why you ins insisted on it, because yes, you are right. It's a key issue. For me, the question is very simple. How do things, how do things look like after the providential, the alleged, alleged providential subject of revolutionary history collapsed, vanished? That is the Marxist of proletariat in the Marxist acceptation. How do things look like? And in particular, how does class struggle look like? So you have two answers. One answer, which is the, let's say, normal uh, conformist uh, conservative answer is that as simple as that. If the providential subject of revolutionary history has disappeared, it means that class struggle has disappeared. 
if the providential subject of class struggle has, has disappeared, it means that class struggle was a fake concept. So let's be happy, joyful, and think about the state of the world without using any more that notion uh, of class struggle as an intellectual uh, tool, as a concept, and let's replace it, let's say, with uh, citizenship. Oh, this is beautiful, citizen, citizenship, etc. And this is the end of class struggle. So this is one of the answers. And of course, it's the dominant answer today. The other answer is to look at the way class struggle, impersonal, in general, uh, returns, comes again and again in new forms, uh, with new actors. And what the Yellow Vest movement was very exemplary of well, the fact that you don't need, there is no need for a providential subject for having new forms of class struggle to develop, to bloom, to blossom, to blossom. So who were these people? The question was always, the scholastic question about the Yellow Vest movement was constantly, but who are these people? They're just a, mid, a multitude a, com, with all sorts of components, completely heterogeneous. So, no, but this is not the problem. What the people are sociologically speaking, the problem, the only, problem is, is there in a new struggle that appears and develops, is there something like a, a line on the horizon that appears which is related to emancipation? That is, as Monsieur would put it, emancipation, it always means and only means self-emancipation. And in the Yellow Vest movement, yes, very obviously, there was something like that about justice and equality. Justice, equality, among other things. Uh, in other movements or in other forms of agitation? No, not at all. Look, recently you had these so many demonstrations of people, a multitude of people who were mobilized against what? Vaccination. This is trash. Okay, there were many, there were many, but this in terms of class struggle does not mean nothing. It doesn't exist because there is no horizon of emancipation, for emancipation. So they had these foolish slogans, freedom, uh, blah, 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 whatever, freedom. They wanted to be free. So they didn't want to have their vaccine. Okay, silly people. So we have to make, we can make the difference. This is the, the uh, criteria. Uh, so yes, the Yellow Vest movement was very important because it shows that even when orthodox Marxism is a failure, even when the providential class collapses, class struggle goes on. And last, uh, your last um, uh, question was about governance by and governance through. Yes, uh, it's, it's a fact that um, we know less and less who actually is governing us, ruling over us. 
they are evanescent. They become, I mean, these people, these so-called elites become more and more evanescent. They change constantly. Uh, they are, they have no, uh, they are all of small scale. Let's say they are very small, of small scale. They look like uh, comedian actors, uh, etc., cetera, et cetera. And it's like when you see now, right now in front, the guy who is having the bigger success, uh, he's not a professional politician. He is just some sort of a, a media agitator from the far right. And he's growing and growing and growing and et cetera, et cetera. He comes from nowhere and talks nonsense, but it doesn't matter. He's going up and up. So, okay, governments buy, it's something which becomes more and more, let's say, dubious and evanescent. And um, as a complement of that, or counterpart of that, what we see, let's say, augment, increase, constantly increase, is not, so I, I see how difficult it is here to pass from what I, how the way I, I tried to put it in French to another language. Because you said lang uh, governance rule. Yes, uh, to some extent, yes, but it's not exactly that. What I mean exactly is uh, something about what is the fuel? What is the fuel? of the new forms of government. E exactly in this, oh, oh, what does it work on? In the sense, uh, if I ask you, what is your motorbike working on battery or gasoline? This is what I mean. So what is the gasoline? What is the fuel or what is the battery? for all these new forms of government, security, culture, sport, uh, television, uh, this thing, et cetera, et cetera. And this is what is uh, growing uh, uh, constantly. Uh, uh, and uh, all the more, since the traditional forms of government are uh, almost vanishing, vanishing uh, uh, down, uh, being weaker, becoming weaker and weaker, and of course, as a consequence, less and less legitimate in the face of the public opinion of ordinary people. So this is it. So now concerning Kwan uh, Min's uh, intervention, I'm not sure that I got everything because I said I had some hearing uh, uh, problem. But um, resistance, you mentioned the, the notion of resistance at, at, at the beginning. Uh, of the talk. I'm trying to use it, resistance, less and less in my, let's say, in discussions I try to launch on political issues, because resistance has become a portmanteau term, that is a mantra. Everybody, it's, it's very interesting, in Western societies, uh, and in particular in a country like France, Everybody is resisting. Nobody would say, uh, okay, I'm embodying uh, the legitimate form of power. Uh, so I'm the embodiment of law and order. I mean, not, not in the repressive sense, but just the law and the order. Yeah. No, nobody would say that today. Beginning with, beginning with 
the people who are in charge today. They are resisting to, they resist to many things. They resist to uh, whatever. Uh, so this is the dominant posture. Everybody today has to be uh, resist in the posture of resisting resistance. So, and of course, it's um, it's a vehicle of complete confusion because on the simple term of resistance, you cannot make uh, the difference between a neo-fascist nerd who resists, he resists, he resists, he resists, he resists to what? To the invasion of our countries by the migrants. And uh, uh, let's say an anarchist or whatever. So it has become a general mantra. And I think we have to resort to a new vocabulary to new concept, to other notions of concept, to think about the new forms of agonism or antagonism in uh, uh, our uh, societies. We have to think in, as Foucault uh, said, in terms of interactions and relationships. I think, and this, this is where the fight against essentialism matters. Uh, what is dominant, you know, and this, come, this comes from political science, political sciences, it, it, it's something, uh, okay, it, it's, it's a play. In general, it's a play. I, I say it as a philosopher. Political sciences are a play because they constantly nourish the essentialism in the characterizations of, okay, or in the promotion of uh, concepts on politics. So you have, okay, an essence or super essence, meta essence, which is democracy. On the opposite, you have authoritarianism and you have totalitarianism. And these are compact essences. And with this very light luggage, theoretical luggage, you can explain everything, mainland China, blah, blah, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, but what matters? It is not that, it is not that kind of simplistic um, uh, typology. What matters is to study how it works in terms of relationships between the people who govern, the rulers, and the people who are governed. This is the criteria. This is what matters. And if you want to know something about, okay, how a country, how, what are the general terms of politics in the country? The first thing you have to study or to have a diagnosis on is what is the quality of the relationship between the governed and those who govern them. This is the main issue and not democracy, authoritarian. No, this is not. So this is my inmost conviction. So, and um, okay. Then you, you pass to an, uh, another very exciting issue. It's a problem of the relation between actuali what? actuality, not actuality in English, actuality in French and distance. Um, if I understood well what you said, you said that we have, we okay, intellectuals, philosophers, academics, do we have to find the right distance, the good distance towards actuality? But it's not easy because um, 
if you if you start from the idea that we are in constant immersion we are deep into the present the present is deep it's thick so and we are not swimming on the superficie we are deeply involved in it you have you constantly have to take a stand in uh, conflicts uh, uh, in front of but also in uh, disputes conflict issues things that look like i would say a brawl it's a brawl it's not like what abermas says we sit around a beautiful round table and we discuss according the, the rules no it's not like that politics is not like that at all it's it's more of it looks more like a fight a brawl so what what can you do as an intellectual if you really care about what i call actuality if you really care you cannot just emit at our statements saying you should we should do this we should do that uh, so wh where are you where do you sit where do you sit this is the main question so uh, if you really want to be involved uh, so you you progressively you are involved in the in the bro itself uh, because you know what foucault uh, what foucault uh, I mean, stated about it in, in a very definitive way is that the that figure uh, posture of the intellectual as a judge who has a red line, direct line to the universal. This is over. Uh, it's not like that. Uh, we are experts on this and that, more or less specialized in this and that, but we are not uh, the vicars of the universal. And we, our position is not that of the, let's say, the minister of consciousness or in moral term, terms, conscience. It's not like that. We are ordinary people. The only thing that makes the difference is that we have a special equipment. We have special tools, concepts. We have read books. We have read good books, which other people have not read. So we have certain abilities for reasoning, uh, putting statements together, uh, and sometimes coining a good concept, which is at the right place at the right moment. This is okay. This is our uh, our job. And so, but we are in the fight, taking a distance. Yes, we have. We always have to do it intellectually when we think about an event, the situation, etc. But then we have to go back to the world. This is the problem. We have to go back to the role and be involved in it. So, and it's difficult because, of course, when we are so close to the what is happening, we can be completely mistaken, and it con it constantly happens. You know, uh, because we have to say something to utter a, a statement, to make a statement, to utter something, and we can be completely out of the Cool. And this is, it's, for example, but you take by you, the great man, the great man on the yellow vest, he was completely wrong about it, saying, oh, all, I quote, all what moves is not red. And for him, red is right, of course, red is right. All what moves is not red, uh, meaning, saying it's, it, this movement is insignificant because they are not related 
to the providential subject or something like that. But he, he didn't understand that this is the way in this post post something uh, post after the classical forms of uh, class struggle. This is exactly the way class struggle continues. He didn't get that point. So he has a very despiteful way of looking down at the yellow vest movement and giving his definitive statements or what moves is not red. No, it's not red, it's yellow. It's yellow, but it moves, my friend, it moves and, and it moves forward. Okay, and it's related to emancipation and this is what matters. Okay, so we always are exposed to the risk of, uh, okay, missing the point, missing the point. But I think it's better for us to face that risk than just sitting uh, and uttering We start our Q and A uh, very soon. So if you have any question or comments, you can leave it in the chat room. 各位,大家都可以把問題留在這個chat uh, room這邊,好 等阿亮回來,我們就他講完,我們可能可以開放討論一下我想我們可以到九點半結束OK, okay, you're back uh, Unmute yourself No, unmute We cannot hear you Okay, okay, do you hear me now? Yeah, yes, oh, I think yes, that yes. The, the, the connection in the hotel is not very good. This is why yeah, yeah. we had an interruption. Yes, so, go ahead. Uh, okay. Um, yeah, what I was saying, is basic, basically our job is very simple. If we take it seriously, we have to shoot arrows and we have to aim well. We have to shoot our arrows and aim well, and that, and that's it. That's enough. Um, I mean, we, we are not ruling anything. We are not empowered for or by anybody or anything. No, we are just uh, uh, something like yes, uh, maybe guerrilla fighters. Uh, so we have to find, make ambushes sometimes. Make, make, prepare a good ambush. Th this is not bad, and. Uh, then succeeding in exposing somebody or something, uh, promoting a notion which goes completely against the stream, things like that. Uh, showing, showing that uh, everybody can think and act differently uh, and take a stake, a distance from the consensus uh, in this damn prison. Um, what, what else? Yes, uh, on irony, you said something quite interesting on irony. For me, irony is related to style. Uh, it is needed if if you want uh, to be, let's say, acknowledged, if you want that what you say, the, the, the propositions you can, in the statements you can issue, the analysis you can produce, if you want this, 
to be acknowledged, you have to work out some sort of uh, personal style. And from this angle, irony being ironical is not just a matter of snobbishness. Uh, it means something, it's a sign. Or if you prefer, it's a signature of what? Uh, a sign of what? It means it, it's a reminder. Reminder of the fact that most of the things which are most respected are not respectable. So you mock them. Yes, we mock them. And you constantly issue and reissue the basic statements, respect, yes, but only what is respectable. And all the rest, no. There is no need. I mean, the respectable. Uh, a prime minister as a prime minister and because of his position, no, this is not respectable, etc., uh, etc. Et so irony is the mark, the trademark of, of this. It's a way of taking a distance from the things the consensus is made of. And it's um, a way of saying not, you know, not all the blah, blah about freedom of uh, speech, opinion, etc. No, saying I'm, because, you know, freedom, it's, it's, it's an, an empty talk, but, but I'm a stray dog. Yes, this, I'm a stray dog. And in that sense, I'm free. But as a stray dog, not as the, uh, average subject of a democratic state or whatever. Th this is bullshit. No, I'm a stray dog. It's more precise. And in that sense, this is perfectly Deleuzean. Stray dog, in that sense, it becomes an image concept. It's a concept. It's not just a dog. <laughs> it's a concept. Being, making philosophy, as a stray dog. Well, this is a beautiful ideal. It's wonderful. You can you can live on it uh, until you are a centenarian. You know. <laughs> Great. Should I, I, should I bark? Yeah, why not? <laughs> no, I, I think, I hope we have a bunch of uh, straight dogs here. <laughs> <laughs> or a howl. Well, uh, let me say a few words before we open up for a Q&A session. I guess, I think uh, our audience would like to share with us their thoughts or questions and so on. So I, uh, ask them to leave their uh, comments or questions, but they can speak up too. Uh, so maybe I will try to do that in English so that uh, Alan can get it uh, directly. So Weixing, would you please help to do the interpretation into Chinese or uh, Mandarin? So I think here during this past two hours, what we were doing is not to ask who is philosopher or how to do philosophy. We are thinking how shall we or how do we face the present, face the reality, face the world in front of us. We are in the midst of it. How do we do philosophical thinking that is, okay? Uh, to face the reality is to do thinking philosophically, but at the same time, politically. It has to be, it has to be political. And also it is a radical 
ethical position. Okay, it is not following the traditional or uh, 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 at all or custom or given rules uh, and so on. So what Alain was, or, was saying to challenge the, the, the institutional lives and uh, legitimize rule of the game, okay? and to detect the new forms of class uh, conflict or new forms of oppression, okay? So this is a constant task for us to do. I think both as intellectual and also as educator, okay? Uh, in a way, in some way, we are all educator and we are all philosopher, we should do that. So, uh, but we are in the reality that uh, everything can be justified, rationalized, normalized by ideology, by institution and by common sense. So how do we take ourselves to the margin, to the limit and to think in a different way as uh, Alain said to do against the stream or to question the rule to rock or to revert to, uh, to play with the limit. I think this is thinking. Our thinking should be at the margin, at the limit so that we can force ourselves to see what we are blind. So, uh, Huimi asked, or he confessed, <laughs> he is not an activist. He, how, uh, but actually, when you write, you are an activist. You are action. You are taking action. You act, right? So, but uh, when we act, when we write, we are activists. But how do we face reality? That is a question. Guanming actually brought up a very important, significant uh, dilemma or aporia for people in Taiwan and also most people in Asia and many, many people in Southeast Asia that uh, uh, from the students that I've uh, encountered in the past uh, uh, years, I know their difficulty, but also the same for uh, people in China and more so in Hong Kong, it's more and more desperate. Okay, so when Alain, you said, when we see the ugly things, we should question, right? We should confront, we should engage. But when this ugly and unacceptable things is reality, is systemized, institutionalized, is uh, digitalized, they have the health, what, what they call it, health code. Uh, yesterday, when we were in another uh, conference, uh, people in China, everyone should show their uh, iPhone with a health code. They, 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 they are red, they are yellow, they are green. If it's yellow or uh, red, they, they should not pass the border from province to province and so on. It's, and those health codes are transported to the to the Gong'an, to the to the government, to the police station immediately. It is not only a medical care. So, in that situation, or why the uh, situation is why in the fifties and sixties or uh, in Taiwan there there was no philosophy department because they were all in prison. They were all uh, dismissed from school. But why is there no philosophy department uh, in most universities in Southeast Asia? Malaysia, Indonesia, they, they, uh, uh, or I don't know, Vietnam, they, they have philosophy, but they, 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 it is not philosophy. <laughs> it is a uh, accumulation of uh, different archives and so on. So, in that when you cannot speak, how do you resist? When you cannot utter, when you are in danger, as Guan Ming said, okay, any minute, 
then you can be transported to the jail that you have experience now. You cannot move, but you are not censored. Your thought is not controlled. You are not monitored. You are not watched. But if you are watched, then how do you think or protest if you are prolonged in this uh, isolation, alienation, and prison? So, uh, but we all need to practice uh, our journal in the prison house, right? Diary in the prison. But, uh, the, but again, this is actually, uh, we, we, are, we are really facing the question. It is not, other people are more difficult, we are better off and we can speak and so on, but we are in our own difficult situation because what's blinding us, we might not know yet, okay? Or we are accustomed to, to cope with the system. When we protest, the system doesn't listen. You cannot rock them, but we still have, have to think. So I think this is a very good uh, reminder uh, for every one of us, for the audience, uh, many of them are our students. And, and, uh, and for the readers of this uh, online book, but we can uh, open up for uh, Q and A and before the end, I think uh, maybe uh, the speakers uh, Guan Ming and Yuan Hong and Arlene can uh, share a few thoughts. Let's uh, see whether there are questions from the uh, audience. Anyone wants to join us? If they do, they can leave a message or raise your hand. You know, there's an icon, raise your hand like this. Okay, but I can put it down. Okay. Uh, while you are thinking or, uh, or maybe Guanmin, uh, Yuan Hong, uh, and Alain, you can uh, continue your conversation. I'll watch out uh, whenever there's any question pop up. As um, a brief uh, comment on, on what you, you said uh, right now, Joyce. Um, when, when, when I'm uh, promoting philosophy, I'm not promoting philosophy as a discipline, of course, as an academic discipline. That is, I, I, I know. I, sure. I, I'm not. No I'm not. I'm no, not, no, no, no. What I meant was <laughs> no. not really. That that's just a symptom, or that is, that is a, a manifestation of the the uh, ecology or environment. They also do not encourage any political activities on campus. They can't, but they can do that outside. My colleagues in Malaysia, Malaya University. They do this uh, refugee education and uh, refugee uh, uh, um, uh, self-help uh, cuisine, uh, and they educate the second generation of the refugee or migrant workers, uh, those, those colleagues and their uh, friends, and the uh, Afghan, oh, you, you met them last time, right? The Afghanistan. A refugee theater group. They also participate in the community. They they do that outside of their campus. They cannot do that on campus. Yeah, yeah. So I'm not saying establishing the uh, philosophy department doesn't help. No, no. What, what I mean is that it's not what I'm promoting. It, it, it's not a discipline. It's not a special field. It's not a specialty. It's two things. Uh, let's say. Um, disposition that is state of mind uh, and uh, uh, gestures, behaviors, behaviors. And this is open to everybody. Uh, everybody, in that sense, everybody can be a philosopher, which is very different from uh, 
teaching philosophy in the sure. academy. I, I agree, but I was saying, yeah, I, I totally agree that kind of uh, disposition or attitude or gesture. But if you are watched, if you are, I mean, uh, monitored, censored, and watched every minute, okay, you don't no, know. No, no, no problem. No, no, it's not, it's not yeah. a problem. The only limit is the extermination camp. Uh, if you are in a line in front of a gas chamber, you cannot resist, you cannot do anything, and you cannot philosophize. But in any oh, you can other do that even in your in even there. in in what mm. even in what the the Western uh, the Western political uh, sciences call totalitarian totalitarian regimes. You can act, behave, think philosophically. The good, the simple example, you, you know, uh, we made uh, uh, use, uh, uh, profuse use of him in recent texts with my uh, friend uh, Juan. Uh, is Klemperer, the German philologist Jewish German philologist Klemperer. He was a Jew uh, and persecuted as such during the war by the Nazi, the Nazis in Berlin. He was not uh, transported, sent to uh, an extermination camp because he was lucky enough to be married with a lady who was not Jewish, who was Aryan. Uh, so he could stay in Berlin, but he, he, he was prevented from living, going out, all these things, uh, many things uh, stigmatized, of course, harassed, persecuted, etc. But still, in spite of that, what did he do? He observed, he constantly observed, and since he was a linguist, he observed in particular the way the language German was being transformed and transformed into some sort of an horrid uh, jargon by the Nazi. So how not only the Nazis themselves, but ordinary people began to speak some sort of what we call in French langue de bois, that is literally a language made of wood, a language made of wood, that is some sort of a jargon slang, uh, which was something absolutely incredible in which uh, the words, the meaning of the words completely changed. For example, fanatic, fanatic became something good in, in this Nazi jargon. And he observed very carefully all that and made a fantastic, wonderful book out of it, which was published, of course, after the war, and which is today a reference and a pattern book for us. So even, I mean, what I mean by this is some sort of an allegory. There is an allegory of Lemper. Okay. Even is his very dire conditions, you can do something which is related to what I call philosophy. His attitude during all these abominable years was the attitude of a philosopher. And this was resisting, of course. This was a way of resisting. Okay, I agree. Uh, Yuan Hong, Guan Ming, you have any? Uh, uh, to the audience, you can also use this uh, question answer box, okay? But you can also use a chat room box, okay? Ah, I, I, may I add something? Sure, please. Okay, uh, what 
uh, Alan answers is uh, somewhat uh, similar to a uh, slogan of Tai Chi Chuan. Uh, the, uh, the master of Tai Chi Chuan always said that uh, if you are familiar with the, the, uh, this martial art, uh, every part of your body is, is, uh, is your hand, but your hand is not your hand. So in, in the formula of Alain, uh, if you are political and philosophical, uh, every discourse is philosophical and political. So there is no need the so-called academic, academic philosophical discourses to be philosophical. Yeah, so this is what I understand from yeah, Alain's. <laughs> I would not go that far. I would not go that far. <laughs> and I would add to what I said, if you have read a few good books, it cannot harm, it cannot yeah. hurt you. It's even a bit better. Yeah, right. I, I agree. Uh, like artists or uh, musician or writer, they can do that in your, their own room. Uh, I, I agree. Yeah. Or in the cell, like Alan now is in. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I, I do, I do, right? You do? <laughs> I do, I do, I do. Hong, you have other... Uh... I just want to encourage the audience to encourage the audience to ask them 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 to ask them. 我想大家可以把握机会问一下问题，呃，问问你们想问的问题，很难得的机会哦。这个我们再拖延个十分十五分钟，那个，we can use another maybe ten minutes or fifteen and wait for some uh question or comment from uh our audience. Uh, I got a question from one audience and asking. Uh, the work, uh, it's imaginary, uh, uh, indigenous, or uh, 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 the imagined stranger. Uh, you mean a book of mine? Yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, how is it called? Uh, imaginary autochthonous. Yes. Uh, imagine stranger. Uh, uh, and uh, 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 imagine in, uh, indesirable uh, return in, of the uh, xenophobic uh, yes, Indian. Return, yes, 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 yes. Yeah, right, the return, right. The return of xenophobia. The return of xenophobia. Yeah. Yes, yeah. something like that. Right, right. You know, all my, all my books are evanescent. They are evanescent. I forget the title. I always forget the title, they're evanescent, so it's a problem for me. I know that they exist, but 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 they don't belong to me. And so... Can't I, you tell? Uh, it, it's uh, uh, about uh, ten, uh, 10 years ago, but it's still here. Mm, 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 yeah, mm. xenophobic, uh, yes. xenophobia. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, right. I was trying to paste uh, the, the list of your publication on my chat room, but I couldn't. I don't know how, why, yeah. Just because they are so evanescent. <laughs> yeah, they resist your work, resist my <laughs> keyboard. <laughs> okay. Uh, but uh, the... The, the history that I brought up just now, the past uh, how many years, uh, starting from 2004, when we're, we were at, in the uh, tea house, Ziteng Lu, mm -hmm. right? I remember you and the Yuan Hong were talking about your socks. Wazima. <laughs> Whether that smells? No, 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 no. I, no, no, it's not, I remember. I said, it's the first time in my life that I have to speak 
philosophically to talk about philosophy without my shoes. <laughs> oh, <right. laughs> it, 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 it was such a strange impression because I yeah, right, felt right, like right. I, I had that big impression that... naked without <laughs> my shoes because in the West, in the West, when you are in the position of whatever, teaching, giving a lecture, having a serious talk, philosophical talk with other uh, discussion partners, you have your shoes on. Yeah, and yeah, right, right, right. So that, that, that's it uh, for all students here or all friends here, uh, starting from 2004, we were discussing this issue at uh, Zitengru, the tea house in Taipei. It was a place uh, for all dissidents during the Japanese period, okay, for the Taiwanese intellectuals. And also during this uh, KMT government uh, ruling regime uh, uh, period. But uh, also that is a place for, for our uh, Cultural Study Association. We started all our uh, forum over there. So it is just a critical uh, observation analysis of uh, contemporary uh, culture and society. But Alain came and discussed with me how to move universities outside of the wall, outside of the state, and also move to Albania, uh, 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 Portugal, 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 huh? Portugal, Portugal. Yeah, Portugal and every every, every place, Istanbul and Shiak. <laughs> And we meet uh, students from all, all over the world. Uh, uh, so from then on, uh, Alain also introduces a student from Haiti to our Institute, Institute of Social Research and Culture Studies and finished their degree. And one went back to Haiti uh, in the university, right? And one, I don't know where is he now, but the in other one is in France. France. He's in France. Okay, yeah. So uh, thanks to Alain, but also thanks to all the international students that we learn a lot from every, every student uh, and also our current student. Uh, so that really push us to think and to read and to discuss and to think and to offer courses to address the issues. So uh, I think starting from uh, 2004, it's very early, right? Uh, our institute started only in 2002, right? So our international uh, relations or students and also collaborations started from uh, mainly from our land, yeah. But also uh, later on, we, we have uh, all different network, not only in Europe, but also Southeast Asia and Africa and uh, uh, very little from Latin America. But yesterday we had a scholar from Cuba, uh, Alan Chen in invited him. Uh, well, okay, okay, one brief uh, comment. Uh, 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 yeah, okay, uh, Alan, Alain, you, you mentioned, uh, I, I quite understand that you mentioned how uh, Leota and the body, uh, uh, you know, uh, brought a mess uh, or opportunity uh, for, for the English word to ridicule uh, or something uh, with the negative uh, 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 label of uh, postmodern, postmodern something. Uh, but, uh, well, uh, even for Michel Foucault and uh, Gilles uh, Deleuze. Uh, uh, for example, like, uh, uh, you know, uh, they, they uh, the, the college students, uh, ma majority speaking, they prefer, uh, you know, uh, David Harvey's, uh, the books on neoliberalism than uh, Michel Foucault's. Uh, which uh, uh, I think Michel Foucault is uh, the best one, uh, you know, uh, penetrating on the level of uh, subjectivation, which uh, David Harvey never, uh, you know, uh, uh, penetrate. But uh, you, you see that uh, th that's an atmosphere, not uh, because of uh, he, uh, he did something wrong, 
uh, and uh, Gilles Deleuze, uh, for example, uh, you know, uh, he argues that uh, the desire uh, itself is revolutionary. Therefore, the, uh, the desire does not desire uh, an orienta uh, orientations, uh, a revolutionary orientations from somewhere. So, but this is uh, uh, being ridicule ridiculed as uh, you know, body without a politics. Okay, uh, pays uh, uh, Deleuze, uh, body without organ. Uh, they are ridiculed as a body without a politics. So these things, you know, uh, I I think uh, I will not I will not blame on Leotard or Baudrillard for the mess uh, of uh, because uh, it's a. Uh, uh, something uh, you know they they can do the similar things on uh, Foucault and and Deleuze. Uh, yes, that's that's uh, my brief comment. Yeah. I would agree with you. I would agree with you because it, we always had this problem with uh, normalization. I talk about normalization, normalization of philosophers who were dissidents. When, when they were active, when they were creating, when they were writing down their beautiful books, they were dissidents. They were, they stood outside, they were outsiders. Uh, I mean, out of the academic system. Uh, at, the, at the end of last century, it was still rather perilous, difficult to present, to, uh, 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 project uh, for a thesis on Foucault, let's say, in the academic realm in France. But people would, I mean, the people in charge, uh, the academic in charge would be very suspicious and say, well, well Foucault, no, he's, uh, <clears throat> he's, he's not quite uh, as he should, as, as a respectable philosopher should be. So, and after that, you have a complete transformation and they become the, the gods. They become the idols of the institution and everybody rushes, uh, even those who were against them before. Now they make uh, their uh, business uh, out of them. On Foucault and Deleuze, uh, you cannot imagine. I, I can go into details, but in France, it's absolutely amazing how stunt reactionary uh, uh, academics uh, now make, uh, as we say in French, their honey. It's a honey for them. So it, it's uh, absolutely grotesque. And all around. So there, there always is a problem with the reception and the risk that's something which was produced, created as, let's say, uh, uh, genuine creation, a work of, uh, like, like Foucault's book you mentioned, after, in terms of reception, it becomes something completely different. And once you are dead, I mean, once you are dead, uh, the, your philosophical body becomes a booty. It's a booty for all the vultures and hyenas of the academic institution. And this is what happened also. Yes, you're right. This is what also happened to Foucault, to Deleuze. When, when you see what, what the, now what the, let's say the first circle, the first circle in terms of, uh, that, those who are the, the gods, the gods, or I should say the janitors, the janitors of Foucaultian, uh, Foucaultian orthodoxy or Deleuzean orthodoxy, the janitors of Foucaultian or Deleuzean orthodoxy in France. If you take a look at this, oh, you can only lament uh, because I mean, the work, these, works which were so vivid and lively and orthodox, it has become something which is uh, the, 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 the material for a new scholastic. They have a new Deleuzean scholastic, a new Foucaultian scholastic. So yes, it's a bit different from what I mentioned, but 
basically it, it, it's about the same. You cannot escape it. And when you are dead, when, uh, you cannot escape it because you, you cannot say, no, no, this is not what I meant. Uh, it's not like that, etc., etc. So it's free. It becomes a supermarket. It becomes a supermarket. And, and yes, all right, postmodern is like that. It's not exact. Uh, it's not entirely, totally uh, uh, Lyotard's fault. But still, postmodern, it's too vague. A concept should never be too vague. It's postmodern, it encompasses. Uh, yes, this is the problem. Uh, but yeah, we all make mistakes. So. Yeah, we and all we make, not make mistakes. Yeah. For our posterity. There yes. are risks yes, yes, yes. always. Yeah, we will. Yes. There are stakes. So, uh, but our words, our writings will continue and will move people. Uh, I hope to the right di good direction to the emancipation. Uh, I think this is a lesson um, or no, not a lesson, but uh, inspiration that we, we get from Professor Bosa. And so I want to thank him again for uh, putting all his thoughts into words uh, and publish so that people can share and read. Uh, I also want to thank uh, Professor uh, Yuan Hongzhu and Guan Ming, Huang Guan Ming, for joining here, us here for this uh, three and a half hours. <laughs> so, so <laughs> already a <laughs> uh, uh, very uh, interesting, stimulating discussion. Actually, if I want to in continue and insist, we can move, go on. Okay, we can argue and debate with uh, Alain again, but I think we should let everyone rest. I also want to thank Wei Xun for his uh, untiring support uh, in interpretation. I know interpretation is very tiring yeah. and exhausting. Uh, thank you so much. And I hope in, in the uh, near future we can have a similar uh, occasion and event and discuss uh, philosophically about issues, not on international law, but on <laughs> our present <laughs> difficult situation. Okay, there are things uh, we, we need to face. And I just want to make a very brief uh, uh, advertisement next week uh, from Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Uh, our center uh, is a uh, uh, presenting a, a film festival, a Muslim film festival. We have invited a refugee theater group from Afghan, Afghanistan, uh, uh, based in uh, Kuala Lumpur. We have uh, uh, invited scholars from Middle East and uh, 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 Singapore, uh, all Muslim, and also uh, directors uh, on Palestine uh, film, on a uh, Uyghur uh, film and two scholars on Uyghur situation, Xinjiang dilemma uh, uh, currently going on in China. Uh, Alain, you might want to join us for that mm -hmm. session, Xinjiang mm -hmm. issue, Uyghur, uh, and, and so on. Su Jianyu is coming to, to give a talk on that and another professor from Zhengda. So we have, uh, we do want to uh, welcome everyone to join. The, in the morning, uh, there are movies, in the afternoon and evening, there will be a forum, but, but uh, in, uh, inserted with some short documentaries. And one documentary from uh, Afghanistan too, a recent one. So there are issues that we want, mostly want to discuss the difficult tension between uh, 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 politics and religion and also a difficult situation of women and different interpretation of Islam among Muslim communities uh, in different world. We, we have many, many Muslim students uh, in our uh, university on campus and there are many uh, Muslims. Uh, actually, Lu Gang Bao An Gong, right? It was a, a mosque. Uh, 鹿鹿港一七二五的这个
呃保安公司第一座清真寺，呃、uh, ，the 呃、uh, brought 呃、uh, led by 呃呃郑成功 ，Ko Ko Shinka， 呃 ，his followers are many， many of his followers are Muslim because they are more all from mostly from Quanzhou， 啊、uh, 呃、uh, descendant from 呃、uh, of Arab Arabians 呃、uh, descendant and so on so。Uh, that that would be a uh, very. I would think uh, that's a very exciting uh, uh, event. Uh, it, it's all organized by students, so of course I I was there to discuss, but I do not understand uh, the inside story. So we have uh, Professor Fari Alata uh, from Malaysia to help us to also oversee all all, all the details. So uh, welcome everyone. Okay, so it's a long night. Uh, I hope you have a good uh, rest, good evening and good dream. <laughs> good night, bye-bye. Okay, bye-bye. Yeah. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you, bye-bye. Take care. Good night. Good night.